Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name, for those of you that don't know me, is John Sears. I am the Admin Services Coordinator for the Division of Forest within Forest Parks and Recreation. And today you are attending the first in the series for what we're calling the Office Essentials series. And we're going to be covering a lot of topics over the course of these trainings, and they're going to follow a basic format, which you can see presented here. So we're going to cover some basic features, some advanced features. We're going to do an exercise that you can all follow along at home. That'll be easier if you've got a second monitor. If you don't, that's OK. Um, everything will be available on YouTube after this training. Uh, so I'll provide a link after this, but feel free to uh, subscribe and follow that if you um, want to get these and you can't make every training in a live environment. I'm more than happy to to share those as well. So if you've got some people that you think might benefit from these, whether they're in state government or out of state government, you're more than welcome to share them. So we're going to hit this basic format and we're going to start today with Outlook. So I know what you're thinking. Like, I know Outlook, right? I have Outlook on on my computer all of the time. Uh, I've been using it for email and calendar and maybe even tasks for as long as I've been working and having a computer, right? So what could I, why am I talking about Outlook, I guess, is, is a reasonable question. And if your experience is I use Outlook, it's because uh, everybody uses Outlook. So uh, these are average usage statistics over the last six months for the state of Vermont. The state of Vermont has about 9,000 employees. And so the average Outlook usage is 8,563. So everyone is using Outlook. So when the question is, why is John talking about Outlook? It's because you're using it. Everyone is using it. And the question is, is how can we use it better? How can we take it to the next level? How can we transform our work? And the reason I'm starting with Outlook is because I think it's the best possible okay. representation of what this training series can provide, which is taking a tool that you might already understand and giving you some new insight into it and some really small things that I can take five minutes to show you that might transform the way you do work and might transform your inbox, which I know many of you are in a constant war against. And uh, we're going to take a look at my inbox later, and um, I think you'll you'll see some interesting things. Um, and you'll notice that we are talking about many of these things in our training series teams. Uh, we're not talking about Word, uh, Excel. We're not talking PowerPoint, but we are talking OneNote. So we are going to be addressing several of the items on this list in the near future. So the outline today, we were talking basic features, advanced features, best practices, and an example. Um, but our basic features for today include mail. So in particular, we're going to talk about reply types, follow-ups, and folders, and how to leverage those tools. We're going to talk a little bit about the calendar, and uh, as well as the third and often uh, ignored tasks feature. We're also going to talk about some advanced features, quick steps and rules. That's where we're going to take that next step, and that's where we're going to do an exercise to for you to build a rule built based on one of my favorite rules. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about best practices. We're not, we're not going to talk today about best practices for email. Um, the very idea of having your email open all the time and the incentives to check it constantly and the disruption to work that that causes. There are there's an entire field of theory about how to do that optimally. We're not going to talk about that, but we're going to talk about how to use Outlook in the most effective way. Uh, and if you have questions about how you should be checking email and stuff, we're going to talk a little bit about Viva at some point in the future, um, but that's not a topic for today's discussion. So first, let's start with this thing that you're probably familiar with, which is the base Outlook. Uh, mail setup. So there's a couple of features I want to draw to your attention here. Um, so the first down here is um, underneath the inbox, you'll notice I have a bunch of different folders. So you can set up folders that can be both nested and just flat to 
whatever you want. So, uh, you know, you can break it down however you want and you can utilize folders to store emails beyond just the root inbox. And I'm sure many of you are already doing that, so that shouldn't come as a surprise to you. Um, up here, you'll notice that um, there are lots of reply options for individual emails. So as they come in, these will not be grayed out. Um, and I, I know some of this may seem fairly basic, but I promise we're going to get to some interesting stuff. I just wanted to make sure we cover our bases. Um, you're going to use this to reply, reply all. Um, I think one of my favorite things here is this button right here. I don't know how much you've used this. This is the reply with a meeting button. So a lot of times um, I'll get an email with some good information in it, and I'll have to set up a meeting to talk with the people in that meeting. Um, if you reply with a meeting, you can hit that button and it will take the text of that email, it will put it into a meeting invitation, and it will automatically put everyone that's on that email in that meeting. So it's a really, really convenient thing to do. We're gonna talk about these quick steps and rules in a little bit. So keep this brown box in the back of your mind for now, but this is where the meat of really cool stuff that we can do with Outlook is really going to shine. And the other thing that I wanted to highlight here is the follow up button. So Outlook is a combination of three things, really. And it is uh, the mail features, the calendar features, and the task features. So this is where the linking up with the task comes in. You can easily take an email, you can tag it with a flag that specifies how you want to follow up with that and that will create a task in the other piece so that you can follow and submit that. Uh, the other really cool feature in Outlook that's um, I think often overlooked is the idea of delayed emails. So uh, if you want to send an email and you don't want to send it right now, maybe you want to send it on Monday morning and like Oh, I really want to make sure this goes out Monday morning. I really hope I don't forget that it goes out Monday morning. Write it Friday afternoon. Write it when you're thinking about it. And you can use this delay delivery button right here. And you can set it up to go out whenever you want. So that's a really cool thing that you can do in your mail. I don't want to uh, spend too long in this area. I think most of you are pretty comfortable with most of this. But we'll have some time at the end for questions if you do have any. Uh, now we're going to jump to the next most popular part of Outlook, which is the calendar. So um, the calendar you're probably very familiar with. You have your own calendar. Maybe you've got some birthdays. I have my former boss on here. I cannot seem to get rid of her no matter what I try to do when I try and delete it in Outlook. If you're going to ask me how to make the, that calendar go away, I have no idea. I've tried. Um, no, Gina, I love you. Um, but I, I can't get rid of this calendar. Um, but there are a bunch of calendars on here. You can add anyone to your calendars. You can create calendar groupings. So you can create specific calendar groups to toggle people on and off. It allows you to really quickly look at a bunch of people's calendars. And um, you can grab anyone in your organization and add their calendar. Now they may or may not be sharing those permissions with you. So you might only get to see blocked off time, but you can ask them to share their calendars and those details could come in. Um, some of the basic features are available here across the calendar. Um, you know, you can accept, propose new times, reschedule, set up reoccurrences. Um, I use a lot of categories when I'm doing my trainings. You can see here. So I've got these um, green meetings here. There are my reoccurring monthly check-ins with uh, various program managers. I use dark blue as um, indicators for the coaching that I do. Uh, the pale blue is just the default. There's lots of ways to customize the individual calendar things. So by default, they can be by default, they're busy, but you can also tag them out of office. You can tag them as um, open. So if you want to set up a block of time, but you're accepting meetings during that time, you can set it up as open. It'll show up open in other people's calendars. Um, you can set up team meetings, new meetings again. 
most of you are probably very familiar with most of this and you notice this big red text that is not a part of your outlook and it's a send a response why is that big and red and in the middle of it so when you send a meeting invite to someone and you reply to that meeting invite it'll ask you if you want to send a response please say yes um, if you do not say yes um it will not show up it may not show up for them that you have accepted that invitation and if your concern is that, well, I don't want to send them an email because that's just a clutter in their inbox, I've got a solution for that that we're going to talk about later, and that might be the content of our exercise that we're going to tackle. So please, please, please send a response when, uh, at the very least, if you're in meetings with me, I'd appreciate you to send a response, and it doesn't bother me for reasons that I'll show you in a bit. Uh, the last piece that I want to talk about very briefly is um, the tasks aspects this is the third one there's another one for contacts uh it doesn't feel as feature rich as the other ones and it seems kind of messy and hard to utilize properly um so i don't want to talk about it but it's also there um tasks is pretty simple so you can um tag emails like we talked about using the flags there are lots of different ways you can customize it you can also create tasks just in this feature um I, as people that know me, know I'm a pretty big fan of Microsoft Planner and other task tracking things. So do I still use this? And the answer is yes, I do. Um, I really like it for one-off tasks. I, I like it for the stuff I get to check off really easily, right? That's not gonna be there for months and months that um, I can act on and, and move quick so I don't have to set up like a, a block in my planner and um assign people to it it's just it's a thing i got to do i want to do it within the next week or so two weeks at most i put it on here and that's how i sort of break out those different things so any questions on that basic stuff before i get into some of the more advanced features in outlook okay um i am monitoring the chat so if anything comes up that you want to share in the chat or um questions that you might have, feel free to drop those in there. You can also raise your hand if you have any questions. All right, so let's talk about the first of two advanced features. So you might have noticed um, these quick steps tab here. Oh, I got a question fills with any recommendations for tasks. Um, again, I try and keep my tasks to the short and easy to check off variety because if you, cre if you flag an email, it creates a task, but if you delete the email, it also deletes the task. So I try and tie those things together where I want to get my inbox clear. Yes, I have a mostly clear inbox. Um, so I, I try and keep those paired up to make those quick and easy to do. All right, so advanced features, quick steps. Quick steps is right up there on the main screen for Outlook. And I don't know if you've ever touched them or played around with them. But what quick steps are, they're basically designed to be single touch actions. Um, they are buttons that you can press to do a series of actions. There are a bunch that are created by default. So here are some examples of some of the ones that Outlook has created. Um, new meeting with is a, one of my favorites. Um, it is really 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 easy to set up a meeting um, with everyone in an email and um it's it's great because I, I, you don't have to copy and paste you don't have to go and find a new meeting you just hit the button and you're off and running with a email any attachments that are in that email with the people that are on that email it's a really really great custom uh custom quick step where quick steps really come in handy are things like templates so if you are sending if you manually have to decide to send an email but it's always the same kind of email like a form email um make that a single button press if you are constantly emailing the same group of people so maybe you're in a work group and you're constantly having to type in all five or six of those email addresses make it a quick step so i want to one click, create an email that says for work group. 
and then all of the emails that are in that. You can go ahead and customize that. There's lots of stuff that you can have the single touch actions do. You can, with one touch, move things to folders, categorize, flag and move, create new emails, forward emails. So um, an example of the forward to is like this to manager button, which may or may not come standard, but basically it's a one touch. I have an interesting conversation that I think Danny needs to see. I just hit that button. It's automatically going to go forward it to her. Or maybe you've got, uh, maybe you're in a weird two boss situation, or maybe you want to forward it to your team because you think it's um, a really interesting thing. You could have a four team button, right? Automatically take it, forward it. it. It's designed to cut down on the number of clicks so that you only have to set it up once. And it's really, really easy to do. So, um, you could just click on this little uh, button right here to go ahead and create one. You can modify existing ones or you can create a new one. And it's really just, you give it a name and you give it an action and it can be actions. So you could uh, forward an email and then forward and then take the original email and move it to a new folder that you've created that's like forwarded to manager, right? You can, you can sequence these up and if you gain familiarity with having having to do these things, um, it'll really help you when we talk about Power Automate in the future. So there's a hint there. All right, uh, advanced features is rules is where like really the meat of this is. So basically, what we're doing is we're setting up automated steps based on conditional triggers. So basically, what that means is we can set up a series of conditions for things to happen. So if an email comes in with a certain header or from a certain individual, and when that happens, it does a thing. And they're really, really, really easy to create, edit. You can run them manually if you need to. Um, you can see I've got a bunch in here. Um, but now we're gonna go ahead and run into the exercise and I'm gonna show you how to build one of my favorites. So. Um, this is my inbox. It has two emails in it. Um, and it's partially due to how I'm routing my emails. So I have rules set up. I handle them when they come in. Um, I, I don't expect everyone should aspire to this, um, but it is a nice place to be. Um, so follow along at home. If you can, if not, again, this will be up on YouTube later. You can watch it and try and follow along there. Um, so to build a rule, we're going to go over here to rules. And since we want to create a new rule, we're just going to go to create rule. Now, um, we can either do that for create rule, but you see right here, there's kind of a default option. So if you have an email selected, it will try and create a rule based on the email that you have selected. So um, it says always move messages from Danielle Fitzko. So basically it's suggesting that um, every time I get an email from Danny, it, it's gonna do something with it. Um, I don't wanna do that though. I wanna do something else. So I'm gonna hit create rule and it opens up a uh, really simple create rule menu box. So when I get an email with all the selected conditions, so this is the conditionality that we're gonna, we're gonna be considering here. So when an email hits our inbox that meets the criteria that we're going to set, something is gonna happen. Now, um, you can also open up advanced options if you want to sort of build it like, um, build it like a, a bit of a formula. These are all the conditions that you can implement for analyzing the incoming emails. So they can be from Danny Fitzko, and you could combine these. So it could be from Danny and marked as importance. So uh, when Danny sends me an email and it's marked at, I just click on any of these underlined things and then I can go ahead and customize it. So when Danny sends me an email, that is marked high importance. I'm going to do something. So in this particular case, um, I have an email here in a folder that, um, where is it? So I created a folder called calendar that is currently built for receiving accepted meeting invitations. And I'm going to go ahead and create a rule. 
So basically they have this um, typical format here. So accepted and a semicolon. So I can either do that with the advanced options or I can do that here and I could say subject contains accepted semicolon. Now any email that comes in with that exact format with the subject saying accepted, sorry, accepted colon, uh, it's going to do something with it. And I want it to move that item. And I could just select the folder. I want that to go to the calendar. Now every accepted calendar invitation or every accepted calendar response I get is going to hit my inbox and then immediately go into that calendar folder. Because generally speaking, I don't care. I, I care if people accept my meeting invitations. I don't need to see them because they've accepted the meeting. If they are tentative or they decline, those are still going to show up in my inbox. So I'm still going to know if the people that I invited to the meeting aren't coming or might not come. But if they've accepted, those are just going to flow right into this folder. So I don't have to clear them out of my inbox. I don't have to delete them. And the nice thing about them showing up here is that I can quickly peruse them and see if any of those acceptances came with personalized responses. And just like that, the problem of I don't want to respond to these calendar invitations becomes I'm going to go ahead and do that because you can all do this too. And hopefully by following through on what I said, all I have to do is hit OK and it will set up this rule. Um, Again, there are a ton of rules that you can set up and a ton of ways to customize them. And with advanced options, it really helps you build it. So um, if I get any emails from Maxwell Hunter, I want to mark it as high. So if my interactions with Maxwell are things I want to get jumping on right away, I can go ahead and mark it. So it's really, really cool, really, really powerful. All right, and so that covers the create rule. And now I just want to uh, bring us home on a few best practices and then leave a little bit of time at the end for questions. So um, in addition to, you know, we've been walking mostly through the, um, the application for Outlook, but Outlook, aka Exchange, and Outlook is available online. It has the same functionality in terms of um, having calendar tasks and email, and you can access it from anywhere. So it doesn't have to just be um, places where you have the Outlook application. Uh, Viva Insights, you might have seen this icon and wondered what the heck this is. Um, it offers you insights about how much time is dedicated to meetings, how are you checking your emails and how often because ideally you give yourself breaks from checking emails. Um, there are a bunch of other companion tools that you can add on to your Outlook to improve your Outlook experience. Um, Bookings is a really creative one that we're going to get into later. Uh, Find Time, if you want to install Find Time, let me know. It's a little bit complicated, at least for us. Um, but find time if you've noticed that the ability to um, it basically restores Outlook's ability to find a time where people on your team, like if you're setting up a calendar invite, it, instead of having to like scroll through all those calendars, it just finds the next open time. That went away, but it's back with find time. You can install that, and also find time lets you lets you do like a doodle poll where you can find times that people are available and let them cite their preferences and availability, but it's tied to your actual Outlook calendar. So you don't have to have your Outlook calendar up, be doing a doodle poll to try and find time where everyone's available. You could just do find time, send the poll to everyone, and it'll automatically create the meeting and it will automatically um, book off the potentials until everyone settles on a meeting time. So you could like block off calendar space. Um, and then Power Automate, which we're absolutely going to talk about, which is like if you like what you see in rules and you like what we see in quick steps, it's that times a million and for everything in Office 365, not just Outlook. Uh, use rules and quick steps to clear your inbox. Um, 
it's not just about uh, processing the emails, but it's about finding the ones that you have to process and not wasting your time with the ones that you don't have to process. Let the robot process it where it can. Uh, send a response to meeting invitations. We covered that. That's really the only way to know for sure that people know if and when you're going to go there. Um, the other thing that's really, really cool is outgoing emails can include flags. So if you want someone to know that, hey, you've got a week to do this, um, you can put that in your email that's going to them. Uh, go ahead and look at that the next time you're sending an email and um, consider including a flag. Uh, so let's answer a few of the questions in chat. Can you add several email addresses to a rule? Yes. Um, it might. So I think by default it functions as an or. So if you get an email from so and so, so and so, and so and so, it's or. Uh, but the individual different types of rules are and. So basically, if it comes from Danny, Kathy, or Ellen, and has the um, and has the subject line, hey, look at this, throw it in the trash. No, um, but you can set up rules like that. Um, and you can apply multiple email addresses. Um, do rules apply only to new emails coming in or emails already in the inbox? So you can manually run them and it will run them on things in the inbox right then and there. Um, but once the rule is in place, it will automatically run on any new emails coming in. And if you are already using Power Automate and you haven't touched rules, Power Automate runs after rules run. So for instance, I had a... Um, I get automated emails from an online form. And I was automatically forwarding them using the rules in Outlook to a special folder specifically for that purpose. And uh, I was trying to also run a Power Automate script to basically figure out who to forward those emails to. But I had to change my Power Automate script because it was looking in the inbox not in the folder where these things were getting moved to. So it runs Outlook, then it runs Power Automate. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to run those. All right, we've got a minute left. Any other questions, concerns, uh, anything else anyone wants to raise? I know these are quick. OK, um, thank you so much for attending the first one of these. Uh, Find time rarely works. Too many participants may have appointments on their calendars that make them show as busy or tentative, such as FYIs for meetings, um, but not necessarily at that specific appointment. There's no way around this, right? Um, there is. So, short answer: No, there's no real way around that, um, other than them changing their practices regarding meetings. And also, uh, especially for hybrid or online meetings, uh, too many participants is a whole separate issue that we can talk about, and I'm happy to work with you and see if we can find some flexibility there. But yeah, if you're using Find Time, it, it can only work off the information that people have put in their calendars. So um, no real wiggle room there. OK, thank you all so much for attending today. I hope you found this valuable and helpful. And as always, I'm a resource here to help uh, folks in forestry and FPR more broadly. And I just like helping folks in state government uh, and the public at large, because this will be on YouTube. So uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to send them my way. And on, in two weeks, we'll be covering Excel. So look forward to that then. All right, everyone, have a great rest of your day. And I'll talk to you later.